Imagine a place on earth so alien, so forbidding, that even sunlight cannot reach its depths. A place so crushingly heavy, so cold, and so silent that no human could survive there without extraordinary technology. Picture an abyss that seems endless, a wound in the planet's surface that plunges deeper than any mountain rises. This is not a fantasy. It is real. It is the Mariana Trench. The deepest point on Earth. A world so mysterious, so untouched, that even today, in the age of satellites and space exploration, it remains one of the last great unknowns on our planet. Today, we will take a journey together a journey that will descend more than 11 kilometers beneath the ocean's surface, into a realm of darkness, crushing pressure, and bizarre life forms that defy imagination. This is not just a documentary. This is a dive into the unknown. Welcome to the Mariana Trench. Far out in the western Pacific Ocean, east of the Philippines and south of Japan, lies a scar in the seafloor stretching for more than 1,500 miles. This immense chasm, running parallel to the Mariana Islands, is what we call the Mariana Trench. At its widest point, it spans about 70 kilometers across. But what makes it truly staggering is its depth over 36,000 feet more than 11 kilometers down. To understand what that really means, imagine Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on Earth, flipped upside down and dropped into the trench. Its peak would still be submerged by nearly two kilometers of water. Think about that for a moment. This is the kind of scale we're dealing with. It is a place so extreme that it challenges our understanding of geology, biology, and the limits of life itself. The trench was named after the Mariana Islands, which themselves were named in honor of Queen Mariana of Spain. The first serious measurements of this underwater canyon came in the late 19th century during the famous Challenger Expedition, a British scientific voyage that forever changed our view of the oceans. Before Challenger, many people believed the seafloor was relatively shallow, just a few kilometers deep at most. But the expedition's sounding lines revealed something astonishing a depth that seemed almost bottomless. It was a discovery that shocked the scientific world and sparked a curiosity that persists to this day. Yet, even now, more than a century later, we have only scratched the surface of this vast abyss. Scientists estimate that less than 5% of the Mariana Trench has been directly explored. The rest remains cloaked in darkness and mystery. Why is it so difficult to explore? Why do we know more about the surface of Mars than we do about this trench? The answer lies in the unimaginable conditions down there. As you descend into the ocean, the world changes quickly. Sunlight disappears by the time you reach about 200 meters. By 1,000 meters, you are in perpetual night. Below 4,000 meters, the pressure begins to reach terrifying levels 400 times the pressure at the surface. And at the bottom of the Mariana Trench? Over 1,100 times atmospheric pressure. That's like having 50 jumbo jets stacked on top of you. To put it in perspective, if you dropped a simple plastic bottle to that depth, it would be crushed flat in an instant. Even steel can warp and fail under such relentless force. Temperatures hover just above freezing around 1 to 4 degrees Celsius. Oxygen is scarce. There is no sunlight, no plants, no photosynthesis. It is, by every measure, one of the most inhospitable environments on Earth. And yet, life finds a way. For decades, scientists assumed that nothing could survive in such a hostile place. It seemed logical what could possibly live in a world without light, under pressures that would crush a human being instantly. But in 1960, that assumption was shattered. Two Menden Walsh, an American Navy lieutenant, and Jacques Picard, a Swiss engineer made history by descending to the deepest point of the trench, a spot called Challenger Deep, in a specially designed vessel called the Trieste. Their mission was dangerous, unprecedented, and frankly, a little insane. The Trieste was no ordinary submarine. It was a bathyscaphe, a strange-looking contraption with a massive gasoline-filled float for buoyancy and a small steel sphere for the crew, engineered to withstand the crushing pressure of the deep. On January 23, 1960, 
in the cold waters of the Pacific, Trieste began its descent. Hour after hour, it sank deeper and deeper 6, 000 meters 8,000 meters 10,000 meters. Finally, after nearly five hours, the sphere touched down on the silted floor of Challenger Deep, 10,916 meters below the surface. It was a moment that changed the course of ocean exploration forever. Walsh and Picard peered through their small porthole and saw something that stunned them life. Not just microbes, but an actual flatfish-like creature swimming across the bottom. The discovery was groundbreaking. It proved that even in the most extreme conditions imaginable, life could persist. Since then, our understanding of deep-sea ecosystems has grown enormously, but we are still far from knowing the full story. The organisms that inhabit these depths are unlike anything on land. They live in eternal darkness, in temperatures near freezing, under pressures that would obliterate surface creatures. They cannot rely on sunlight for energy, so they have evolved a different strategy chemosynthesis. Certain bacteria at the bottom feed on chemicals that seep from the Earth's crust, producing energy without sunlight. These bacteria form the foundation of a bizarre food web that includes amphipods the size of your hand, translucent worms, and fish that produce their own light through a process called bioluminescence. Imagine a world where darkness is absolute, and the only illumination comes from the eerie glow of living organisms. Some use their light to lure prey. Others flash patterns to communicate. To witness this spectacle is to feel as if you've stepped onto another planet. In fact, many scientists refer to the deep ocean as Earth's inner spasse a realm as strange and uncharted as the outer reaches of our solar system. And there's good reason for this comparison. In many ways, diving into the Mariana Trench is even harder than going to the moon. We've sent more than 500 people into space. Dozens have walked on the lunar surface. But as of today, fewer than 30 individuals have ever reached the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Think about that. We have better maps of Mars than we do of our own ocean floor. That's how little we know about the world beneath the Waviser. After Trieste's historic dive, it would be more than half a century before another human visited Challenger Deep. In 2012, James Cameron the filmmaker behind Titanic and Avatar undertook a solo descent in a submersible called the Deep Sea Challenger. This was no publicity stunt. Cameron is a passionate explorer, and his dive was a scientific mission aimed at collecting samples and high-resolution imagery. His journey lasted nearly seven hours, and when he reached the bottom, he was greeted by an alien landscapian endless plain of soft sediment, punctuated by strange organisms adapted to the crushing pressure. Since then, a handful of other missions some crewed, many robotic have ventured into the trench, gathering data that continues to reshape our understanding of life on Earth. And what they've found is astonishing. Not only are there organisms thriving in this extreme environment, but some of them possess biochemical adaptations that could revolutionize medicine and biotechnology. Enzymes that function under immense pressure, microbes that metabolize toxic chemicals these are not just curiosities. They may hold the keys to new drugs, new industrial processes, even insights into how life might exist on other worlds. Because hey race the bigger question if life can survive here, in this crushing, lightless void, why not elsewhere? Why not beneath the icy crust of Jupiter's moon Europa, or in the hidden oceans of Saturn's moon Enceladus? NASA's astrobiologists look to Earth's deep ocean as an analog for these extraterrestrial environments. Studying the trench doesn't just tell us about our planet. It offers a window into the possibilities of life in the cosmos. But the Mariana Trench is not only a scientific frontier. It is also a stark reminder of humanity's impact on the natural world. For all its remoteness, the trench has not escaped the reach of human activity. In recent years, researchers have discovered alarming evidence of pollution in its depths. Plastic debris. Persistent organic pollutants industrial chemicals banned decades ago embedded in the tissues of deep-sea creatures. It is a sobering thought even in the deepest, darkest corner of the earth the fingerprint of humanity is there. And as technology advances, new challenges emerge. 
The metals and minerals found in the abyss nickel, cobalt, rare earth elements are highly sought after for electronics and renewable energy systems. Deep sea mining, once a distant concept, is rapidly becoming a reality. Could the Mariana Trench one day be a battlefield for resources? And if so, what will it cost us? For now, the trench remains a realm of mystery and wonder. We have mapped its contours with sonar, captured fleeting images of its inhabitants, and touched its floor with a handful of human expeditions. But what lies beyond the edge of our knowledge? Could there be colossal creatures lurking in the dark, the stuff of myth and legend? Stories of sea monsters, of kraken-sized squids, have haunted the human imagination for centuries. And while no one has found a giant leviathan at the bottom of the trench, we do know that colossal squid, reaching lengths of over 18 meters, roam the deep ocean. If such giants exist in the mid-ocean depths, who's to say what secrets the hadals on the deepest of the deep might still hold? What is certain is this the Mariana Trench challenges us. It humbles us. It reminds us that, for all our achievements, for all our satellites and space probes, there are places on our own planet we barely understand. To explore the trench is to push the limits of human ingenuity and courage. It is to look into a black abyss and see not emptiness, but possibility. Perhaps one day, we will have submersibles that can roam its depths as easily as drones traverse the sky. Perhaps one day, we will build permanent research stations on the seafloor, studying its ecosystems in real time. And perhaps, in doing so, we will discover truths that change not only our science, but our very sense of what life is, and where it can exist. Until then, the Mariana Trench remains what it has always been a frontier. A silent, crushing, alien world beneath our own. A place of terror and beauty, of death and life, of questions that have no easy answers. To gaze upon its darkness is to confront the unknown. And maybe, just maybe, to glimpse our future.